Okay, thanks for the nice introduction. At the same time, I also want to thank Steve because he did a great job and he supports us as uh, speakers here a lot, so makes our life convenient, so thank you, Steve. <laughs> so I'm given the pleasure to talk to you about calibrating parallax parity displays uh, using principles from computer vision. And first, let's see where we can find parallax parity displays. They have found their way mostly into handheld devices because they naturally support one viewer and also have like a kind of a fixed uh, viewing distance and viewing position. So you find parallax parity displays in the Nintendo 3DS, uh, in 3D compact cameras as a preview display, and also uh, newer handies have them included inside. Just a short repetition how it works. Most of you will already know it, um, how, how parallax parity displays work. They have two scrambled views on an image layer, so uh, left eye view and right eye view. And there is a barrier layer which uh, selectively exposes left view to the left eye and right view to the right eye uh, while blocking uh, the each other. So very simple. Um, this can also be done dynamically, so adaptive for new viewer position. And Perrin and his colleague, uh, presented one way to compute a barrier pattern, and it can be expressed by simply ray casting. So you cast a ray from one eye to the, the image layer, giving a first intersection. From here, you cast a ray back to the other eye, giving another uh, intersection point, and then you cast another ray back, giving a further point. And if you do this iteratively, you get all positions on the barrier layer, which define the barrier pattern, um, exactly for this viewing configuration. Now, there are two slight disadvantages. First of all, you need to know the exact display geometry. So you need to know how these two layers stand to each other. You also need to know the eye position, but this is, uh, will always be for any approach. Uh, the second advantage, though, is that, you, that this is an iteration, so you need to know the previous barrier position to compute the next one. So instead, we propose to use homographies. What are homographies? Homographies are simply three by three matrices defining a mapping between two planes with respect to a center of projection. So on the left, you see an image, a typical configuration in a parallax barrier display, where you have two eyes, uh, the barrier layer in front and the image layer in the back were also uh, flipped. And for each eye, there exists a homography mapping display coordinates from the front layer to display coordinates on the back layer as seen through the specific eye. So if you apply the homography to this front point, you get the point in the back. Homographies are also invertible, so if there exists a mapping from front layer to back layer, there also exists a, a, a mapping from back layer to front layer, which is simply the inverse of the matrix. So we can map this point back to the front layer by using the homography defined by the other eye. Also, these homographies can be concatenated, so by simple matrix multiplication. So instead of applying once this matrix and one, uh, second time the other matrix, we can multiply both and get a direct transition between two bar uh, neighboring barrier points. Uh, the whole procedure in, in Flatland, um, we have some uh, position on the front layer, xi. Um, we multiply by the homography defined by the left eye to map it on the back layer, and we apply the inverse of the homography of the right eye to map it to the front layer. Now, this is exactly the same procedure as proposed by Perling, just instead of using rays, we're using homographies. We can combine these two matrices into a single matrix H, and instead of using always the previous barrier point, we can use a reference point just at, at one side of the parallax barrier display and apply I times H to compute the I barrier position. This still uh, involves an iteration. For to compute the i barrier position, you need to multiply h i times with itself, so it's still an iteration, not optimal uh, for, for GPU um, processing. And one more time to point out, h is a simple three by three matrix, and um, everything works on screen coordinates or homogeneous screen coordinates. We can do something um, clever about this iteration to take h to the power of i. Um, we propose to decompose h using the eigen decomposition. Um, 
We get three matrices, so V is, um, contains the eigenvectors of H, while D is a diagonal matrix you see down here uh, containing the eigenvalues. Now, if you take H to the power of I, you just concatenate those matrices, and as you can see, V inverse cancels out V, and all we are left is like the i power of D. Now, since D is a diagonal matrix, Taking it to the power of I is, uh, E is very simple by just um, putting the eigenvalues in the diagonal to the power of E. This is very convenient because now we can um, compute HI without any iteration, which is an advantage of using homographies. So uh, shortly summarizing what we got so far, we assume that we know um, homography for each I. We concatenate these homographies, we decompose them, we get a couple of matrices which we upload to GPU, and on GPU we can in parallel compute all barrier position. In practice how this looks like is that we just define a list of quads. Instead of um, putting coordinates um, as vertex positions, we just use the index, upload this once to the GPU, and then um, each quad can uh, compute its own vertex position in the vertex shader. So this is very convenient, and the only memory transfer we have from CPU to GPU are basically um, these matrices, which we have to upload once in each frame. So the question is now, how can we uh, get HE left and HE right, these two homographies, given two I positions? For this purpose, we um, use a principle from, from computer vision, uh, which, which is called also free view transform, which is a transformation between homographies. Um, this comes from stereo camera setups, um, both cameras observing the same plane. Um, there is a mapping between these planes, and this equation that you see here applies a transformation from one camera to the other camera. So note, um, our eye together with the front layer defines a virtual camera where uh, the front layer is an image plane and the eye is the center of projection. While interpreting this as, as virtual cameras, we can apply the same equation here to, to create this transformation. What does this uh, HE, any -E ref mean? So if we have a point on the front layer and we apply this HE, any -E ref, we get another point and these points share in common that if you create a ray, they intersect on the same point on the back. So what we intend to do with this is, if you have an eye position and a point on the front layer, instead of using this unknown e H E any, we first apply H E any E ref, and then a known H E ref. So for this slide, we just need some eye reference position and some uh, reference homography instead of one for each eye. If we have those, these are the unknowns right now, um, then we compute um, using this uh, equation once for the left eye and once for the right eye, the reference homography. What are these terms? So this K here are, um, in computer vision, they are the, the intrinsic parameters of the um, cameras. For our virtual cameras, this is basically a projection matrix which is defined by the eye position. So the focal length of this virtual camera is just the eye distance from the front screen and, and the remaining parameters is the offset from the center of, of the display of the front layer. So if we have the eye position, we can compute uh, K and KE any. Um, this R is basically the relative rotation between the cameras, which is the identity matrix in our case because both virtual cameras share the same image plane. Um, T is the relative translation between those, so if you have the eye position, this is also defined. And the remaining unknowns uh, is this N and D, which are the plane parameters of the back layer. So I want to point out for more details about how this really works uh, with this reference. Um, it's a very good book, um, very well known in computer and the computer vision uh, society, and they describe in detail how the math behind that works. So um, what we should take out from this slide is if we know just some reference eye position and some reference homography together with these plane parameters, we can in each frame for any new eye position compute the corresponding homography by just applying this free view transform. 
So the question is now, how do we get some reference I position? And here we just do simple um, camera calibration. So some of you might know how to calibrate the camera. Usually you just um, put a checkerboard and take images from different perspectives from this checkerboard. Then you feed the data into a, a calibration toolbox. What you get out is intrinsic, par um, intrinsic parameters, which is the, the projection matrix of the camera which is for us at the moment not really uh, of importance, so we discard that. But also we get the extrinsics, which are the camera positions, respectively the center of um, projection from the cameras for each image. Instead of using a single checkerboard, in our case, we just use the barrier layer as well as the image layer to display a calibration pattern. Um, we have chosen our toolkit markers uh, for automatically e extracting features. So what we get in addition to, this, to the extrinsics, which can be interpreted as uh, reference eye positions, we also can compute for each image a homography mapping front features to back features. There are well-known techniques to do so. And this is all we need. So by simply calibrating the camera and discarding uh, the, most, uh, um, the most interesting part in computer vision, namely the intrinsic matrix, we can get a set of reference eye positions, namely the camera positions, as well as the corresponding homographies. And that's all we needed in the previous slide, except for the plane parameters. I don't want to go into detail uh, here because of lacking time, but you can look it up in the paper. You can use the same information to fit a plane, um, which also achieves subpixel accuracy. So now that we have everything together, uh, let me just summarize one more and go through the, the whole step how to compute a parallax barrier um, dynamically using computer vision. In a pre-calibration step, which can even be done at manufacturing time, we do this uh, procedure with taking images of our display to compute one given uh, reference eye position, reference homography, plus the plane parameter. Um, you get many, for each image you take, you get one. You can just use one or you can optimize um, for, for a certain um, reference eye position by um, optimizing over some uh, error metric. But you can just simply take one of these reference images. Then at runtime, we get from either from an eye tracker or if we decide to have a fixed viewer position, we just take this fixed view position we uh, get some eye position and we can use the free view transform to compute the corresponding homography. So in each frame we do this once for left eye, once for right eye. Then we have these two matrices, we multiply to get H, we decompose, upload those matrices to TPU and compute in parallel all barrier positions. The most expensive step is the eigendecomposition of the matrix H, um, but uh, this is um, the complexity of the decomposition is dependent on the size of the matrix, so since this is a 3 by 3 matrix, relatively small, this performs very well and very fast, so the whole thing can be uh, done in real time. So for the results, um, to capture these images, what I did was just um, to feed static to possible eye positions, and I moved the uh, camera to this position to take an image of the screen. And you can see that we have uh, image separation, uh, left eye blau uh, blue, right eye red. What you also see for this prototype is crosstalk, which is somehow radially uh, arranged. This is mainly due, we have an assumption in, in, in the calibration procedure that both layers are completely planar. Now in this setup, uh, there was some uh, tension and stress on the back layer, and it was bent, curved a little bit. This violates this assumption, and that's why you get this uh, strange radial crosstalk, which we didn't observe uh, for a different prototype where we had really two uh, planar uh, layers front and the back. So to conclude, we presented a computer vision-based calibration for parallax barrier. Uh, we provide the math um, to compute these barriers. We provide a GPU implementation uh, to verify our theory, and also we uh, created a proof of concept prototype. Now, what we still want to do is to apply this to a handheld device. We don't expect much trouble, because the nice thing about computer vision is 
it scales well. So even if you make the uh, screen smaller, if you increase the resolution, you can still zoom in with the camera, and as long as you can focus, um, our algorithm will perform well. And since the CMOS sensors of cameras usually have a higher resolution than displays, uh, we get subpixel accuracy. So this is very nice. Um, what we also want to do is to think of how to include it into a production pipeline, so make it fully automated uh, without any user interaction. And, and it would be nice to have a test application to see, to get some feedback from, from any viewer. And with, with, with this, I want to thank you for your attention. I hope you enjoyed it, um, and maybe there's time for some questions.